So here we are, nearly finished with our project. We just have to mix it, master it, and output it. Now for the sake of time, I've already done a quick mix, but I'll go through some of the highlights of what I did. Now if you haven't already done so, go to the Project tab, click Author Information, and fill out the information about the song. For one, it's just good practice to fill this out so you have uh, some sort of paper trail, if you will, of the song. But it's also a good idea if you're going to output this song to, say, iTunes. Then this information that you put in here will be included with the song. A couple of things I want to point out to you. First, you may notice that there are more tracks. That's because I separated out one track that had both rhythm and a second lead guitar on it. Also, I extended the length of the entire song and cleaned up the back end so all the instruments would end at the same time. So let's take a listen to this song, completely devoid of any mixing whatsoever. All the pans are set to center, the volume is set to 100%, there are no effects, there's no automation. Obviously the song is not finished. There is nothing there to grab onto to listen to. Everything is just jumbled together. When mixing a song, take into account what you would hear if you were sitting in a small venue with just a band playing to you. Take into account what's on the left side of the stage and what's to the right side of the stage. Is it a left-handed drummer or right-handed drummer? Where's the hi-hat? Where's the floor tom? Where's the electric guitar player? Where's the lead electric guitar player? Where's the bass player? Where are the singers? Take all that into account. I would really encourage you to listen to songs that you really like and try to emulate that sound that the mixing engineer got out of it. So here's our final mix. There's a few things I want to point out to you. If you notice on track uh, 2, 5, and 7, you see the automation button is armed. It's in a darker blue. So obviously we can see that we have automation on there. On channels 2, 7, and 8, you can see that the effects button is armed, so we have effects on there. Now on the other tracks, we have also used our envelope type here to create pan or volume changes. And you can also notice on the first track, the lead guitar, I panned it to the left 40% and uh, the second time that the lead comes in which is around uh, let's see beat 34 or so I reduced the volume by 20% because you can see toward the end of the song there's so many instruments coming in and I didn't want the lead guitar to overpower anything else I just wanted it to blend on track 2 the drums I mostly left those alone but if I was using real drums, I would set my pans according to the audience perspective. I did put a bit of EQ on it to give it a little bit of punch and crispness. And if we go to our effects button here, you can see that I used the classic EQ and the preset of Boomer. On track three, the bass, I did nothing here. Uh, I did try to compress it a little bit, but 
overall, I liked the tone of the bass as it came out, and so I just left that alone. And on track four is my second lead guitar, which I panned slightly to the right so it wouldn't compete with track one, the lead guitar, which is panned to the left. On track five, the rhythm guitar, I just added a little bit of automation on the pan here. On the synth pad, which is track six, the first time I panned it slightly to the right to move away from the track one's electric guitar. And the second time it came in, I panned it slightly to the left to move it away from track five, the rhythm electric guitar. On track seven, which is the drum fill, you can see I have some automation here. And you can see the second time it comes in, I do some pretty radical panning. This is to give it a little bit of movement to kind of fake that stereo imaging that I didn't have because each drum wasn't mic'd. So I did some panning to make it sound like he was moving from the floor tom to the hi-hat from the audience perspective. And we'll hear that in a moment. Also, I used the same classic EQ boomer effect as I did on the drum track in track two. And then on track eight is our crash. I'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit for that. Here I used a classic compressor and a really hard compression because I found that toward the end of the cymbal coming in, it was, it was clipping. So I compressed it kind of hard just to get that so it was nice and even as it came in. So after the compression, if you go up to your envelope type and go down to pan, you'll see here that it started off slightly to the left and panned up to its loudest point when it's slightly to the right. Again, that was to move it away from the electric guitar that comes in at the top of the song. Let me go back to volume here and you'll see on track eight what happens with that edit point. See how it goes level? Now it's showing us what the clip volume is. Okay, let's zoom out. The last thing I did to this song was I faded it out. And as you can see, it's the same fade through every track. Now you could go in and do these individually, or what I did was I simply just highlighted it, right clicked, went down to fade out, and I chose medium. And that automatically created that fade out for me.